welcome back to my channel. This is Sal speaking and welcome to a new series of medieval food recipes. Today I'm going to talk about the history of Julian of Norwich. I documented myself and I found a book from 14th century and there are many many recipes so in the next videos you're going to see the actual medieval recipes. That's going to be great. I hope you enjoy it. So stay with me and let's learn more about Julian of Norwich. The woman known today only as Julian of Norwich was born in late 1342 and she died around 1412. In May 1333, when Julian was 31, she became sick enough that a priest was called to administer the last rites. While she lay on what she thought was her deathbed, she had a series of intense mystical revelations, which she called showings. Shortly after this experience, she recovered from her illness. At some point in Julian's life, however, she became an anchorage, committed to a life of prayer and meditation, while confined to a cell adjoining a church. At that point, her style of eating would have changed significantly. An anchorage's life was governed by a rule, a written structure that prevented excess and abuse. Julian would have probably followed the Acrean rule, written early in the 13th century, which provided detailed instructions for Anchorage's life. As a result, she would have worn plain clothes and eaten simple meals while living in a small suite of room. She would have eaten twice a day between Easter and Holy Cross Day, which is September the 14th. And the rest of the year, she would have had had only one meal each day. That single meal would have likely been pottage, stew, or perhaps cabbage soup. In other words, ordinary, simple fare. Anchorages are women who choose to be imprisoned for God, were an accepted part of medieval life, serving a function a bit like a counselor or a psychologist might today. Although they had chosen a living burial, time to the world in a very practical way, these women continued to be active in their communities. Both nobility and commoners, rich and poor, would have come to Julian's window, seeking her advice and guidance. Her anchorage would have had three windows, one that looked into the church, through which she could listen to Mass and receive communion. A second that opened into the outside world, allowing people to speak with her and hear her counsel, and a third that looked into the adjoining room where a servant lived. Unlike Julian, the servant could come and go, enter in Julian's suite to bring food and do the cooking and cleaning. Julian's era was one of turmoil and crisis. The plague swept through England three times during Julian's lifetime. The clergy and undertakers. Meanwhile, other diseases killed the cattle and harvest failed. In 1381, when Julian was 39, people became so desperate, they rose up in a revolt, looting the churches and monasteries. During Julian's entire lifetime, England was at war with France in what is now known as the Hundred Years' War. And yet, in the midst of all this turbulent uncertainty, Julian came to believe unshakably that all shall be well and all shall be well, and that all manner of things shall be well. At 
Her comforting words speak to us today across the centuries. In our own times of anxiety and crisis, she assures us that God's love can never be dimmed or squelched. Though Julian was very concerned with the spiritual world, she believed it was firmly rooted in this world. That the world of food and taste, of ordinary life and everyday actions, is the place where God reveals divine love. Her book pairs well with recipes, where she writes again and again of the nourishment God gives to us and the sweet taste of the divine. Joy and love are the two words that sum up with her spirituality. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please thumbs up and、uh, subscribe to my channel for more content from Sal. I hope you can support me on Patreon. Feel free to support me if you like; just one dollar can make the difference. And remember, if you feel sad, you better call Sal. Bye bye.